Welcome to the Kelloland Sports Zone. I'm Travis Fawson alongside Bailey Millen. Tonight we'll spotlight 10 games stretching from Rapid City to Ipswich to Irene. But we begin with the top five matchup in Brandon. Seeking their fourth straight win, the third ranked Lynx met number one and undefeated Roosevelt. Opening quarter, the Rough Riders converted a fourth and six, but settled for a 28 yard field goal and grab a 3 0 lead. On the heels of the field goal, offense was tough to come by. Thomas Skolton hits Andrew Hansen, who dishes out some punishment, but the drive stalls out. Late in the first half, Roosevelt hits Pater. Brady Dannenbring rolls right, throws deep down the middle, where Devlin McManus makes a grab and goes 64 yards for the touchdown. 10 0 Rough Riders at halftime, and Roosevelt earns a 24 7 win against Brandon Valley. Lincoln looked to end a three game skid against fifth ranked Watertown. Opening quarter facing fourth and 12, Lincoln goes backwards. Blake Holden flies into frame and collects a sack. The arrows take over on downs. Later, Watertown hangs six points on the board. Brandon Smith fakes the handoff and goes deep down the right side to Evan Falconer, who goes 58 yards for the touchdown and the PAT in its seven zip. Second quarter, the Patriots turn up the volume on D as Smith has his pass intercepted by Sam Siegel and the junior DB returns the INT into Arrows territory. Lincoln is in business. Ahead of the closing seconds of the half, the Pats forced to settle for three. Wyatt Vandertop boots a 19-yard field goal. 7-3 Arrows at halftime. Watertown outlasts Lincoln 17-10. O'Gorman attempted to remain among the unbeaten against Rapid City Central. First possession for the Knights turns into points as Zach Norton connects with Canyon Bauer in the end zone. The PAT is good as OG takes a 7 zip lead. The Knights special teams getting it done as well. Evan Wittry gets his hand on the ball and O'Gorman takes over inside the Cobbler's 15 yard line. A few plays later, Norton hands off to Tate Wishard, who bounces off a couple of defenders and barrels his way in for six. Number 30 puts the Knights up 14. Closing minutes of the opening quarter, Norton hits Bauer, and the future South Dakota State Jackrabbit scores again for the blue and gold. The home team's rolling up 21 0. Then to open the second quarter, Wishard. Sees a big hole and dives across the goal line. O'Gorman led by 28 at that point and route to a 41 7 win as the Knights remain undefeated. Aberdeen Central sought its second straight win against Harrisburg. Harrisburg punts in the third quarter. Aberdeen's Caden Johnson bulldozes a Harrisburg player back into the punter for the block. Hmm. Brock Baker scoops it up and returns it for the touchdown. Golden Eagles trail 16 14. Later, Tigers facing fourth and three, and their own Jack Tigan calls his own number, bursts through a hole, and goes 53 yards untouched to put Harrisburg on top, 23 14. Still in the third, Aberdeen drives Austin Huff off the play action, hits Jackson Rolfs for the eight yard touchdown, making it a two point game once again. Then the Golden Eagles with the ball deep in Tiger territory, Huff. Rolls out and gets the ball out, but the ref rules his knee was down. Aberdeen would miss a go ahead field goal. They'd get another chance with 44 seconds left. Tyler Two Eagles kick is up and just misses right as Harrisburg survives the scare 23 21. Good ball game there. A pair of three and one teams met in Brookings as the Bobcats hosted Pier. We'll have the highlights next. We'll be right back. You're watching the Kelloland Sports Zone. Welcome back to the Kelloland Sports Zone. Brookings has won back to back games, including last week's 27 14 upset victory at Watertown. Tonight, the third ranked Bobcats met number one Pier. Opening quarter, the Governor's strike first as Garrett Stout rolls right and hits Jack Maher, who breaks the plane for six. PAT, no good. It's six nothing. Second quarter, Pier adds to its advantage as Stout runs the read option, slips one tackle, and outruns the D the rest of the way. Garrett goes 61 yards for the touchdown, add the two point conversion, and it's 14 zip. Third quarter, more from the visiting Govs as McGuire Rasky 
goes two yards up the gut for the touchdown, and Pierre leads by 21. Fourth quarter, the Governors seal the deal as Gage Gehring bounces off a few defenders and pushes the pile into the end zone. Pierre picks up a 28 0 victory over Brookings. St. Thomas More collected the Class A Kello Cup and met Cheyenne Eagle Butte. Opening quarter, the Braves fumble the pitch and STM scores a defensive touchdown as Jay Negebauer scoops up the fumble and walks into the end zone. At the PAT, it's 7 0 Cavaliers. Later in the quarter, St. Thomas More adds to its lead as Ryder Kirsch goes up top to Grant Huber for the touchdown, and it's 14 0 Cavs. More from the Cavaliers as Riley Olson goes off left tackle and scores the 11 yard touchdown. At the PAT, it's 21 zip. Late in the first half, STM by 34 and counting. Kirsch rolls left and throws deep for six. The Cavaliers roll to a 53 0 win over Cheyenne Eagle Butte. A top five showdown in nine man as Irene Wakanda met Canastota Freeman. On the Pride's first possession, Trey Ortman hands it to Balesy Sage for a one yard touchdown run. Canastota Freeman takes a quick 6 0 lead. Irene Wakanda can't answer back, and the Pride have it on the four yard line. It's Ortman to Sage again for another short touchdown run as the Pride go on top by 12. Ensuing Eagles possession, quarterback Trey King passes to Tate Van Beek in, in the end zone. The seven yard strike gets Irene Wakanda on the board, trailing 12 7. Second quarter, Ortman hands it to Sage, who barrels in once again from four yards out as the Pride extends its lead to 11 18 7 over the Eagles. The Pride is facing a fourth down, and Ortman passes to Colin Helma, who brings it all the way down the field. 50 yards for the touchdown. Canastota Friedman pulls away late in the first half and cruises to a 62 27 win over Irene Wakanda. We'll have nine man highlights from Ipswich, Miller, and Del Rapids next. We'll be right back. The Cavaliers Sports, Sports Zone will be right, right back. Go, Go Cardinals! Cardinals. You're the Cavaliers Sports Zone! Woo! <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Ipswich captured the Class B Kello Cup last spring, winning the Boys Cross Country Championship while finishing second in Girls Cross Country and Track and Field. Tonight, the Tigers collected their cup and hosted fourth ranked Warner. On the Tigers' opening possession, Ben Kalesa looks down the sideline, but Wyatt Larson makes a leaping interception, giving the Monarchs the football. Following the turnover, Warner gives to Dalen Simon. On the counter, he'll cut up field and brought down just short of the goal line, but Warner is in business. On the very next play, the Monarchs give to Simon, who plunges into the end zone from a yard out at the PAT, and it's 7 0 Monarchs. Ipswich defense, though, buckled down for the remainder of the half. Warner third and long, deep in their own territory, but Jacob Nearman gets a sack on Ben Fishbach. And then the uh, ensuing punt. Snap gets over Simon's head, out of bounds for a safety, making it 7 2 late in the half. But Warner would outscore Ipswich 20 0 the rest of the way and pick up a 22, uh, 27 2 victory. A matinee near Miller as Sunshine Bible met top ranked Sully Butte. The Chargers strike first as Nick Whitler rolls out and finds Grant Johnson downfield for the 35 yard touchdown pass and catch. Sully Buttes takes an 8 0 lead. After Crusaders fumble, Whitler does it again through the air. This time it's Cameron Ogle on the receiving end, and for a 21 yard touchdown strike, it's 14 0. Sully Buttes leads with less than five minutes gone in the game. Whitler was just warming up his arm. He fakes hard here, then places the ball perfectly in the hands of Morris Hofer for his third passing touchdown of the quarter. The Chargers take a 22 zip lead off the 24 yard connection. Opening play of the second quarter, Hofer does it on the ground. He gets around the outside and goes 43 yards to Paydirt as Sully Buttes rolls to the win 50 to 10. Another 9 beat matchup hitting Del Rapids St. Mary against second ranked Castlewood. The Cardinals lead by six, but the Warriors answer back. Hayden Ang gets around the corner, makes a couple of men miss, and then he's off to the races for the 50-plus yard touchdown run as Castlewood ties it up at six. 
The Warriors offense is back on the field and quarterback Brandon Benneke flips it to Eng again. He nearly loses his footing but stays up, sheds two defenders in the backfield and then winds and weaves his way in as he finally crosses the goal line. Castlewood leads 12-6. Wow. <laughs> the Cardinals hang two more on the board as this snap goes over the head of Noah Wiersma and rolls out of the end zone. The Rapid St. Mary, though, trails 12-8. Closing minutes of the half, the Warriors run a reverse, and it's Wiersma taking the ball around the edge and down the sideline, 30 yards for the score, as Castlewood rolls to the win 63-14 over Del Rapid St. Mary. It's time to hand out our weekly award, the Touchstone Energy Player of the Week. Tonight's recipient is Sully Butte's quarterback, Nick Whitler. The junior threw for three touchdowns in the first quarter alone, each going for at least 21 yards. Whitler led the Chargers to a 40-point win over Sunshine Bible, as Sully Butte remains perfect on the season at 5-0. The player of the week is brought to you by your local Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Together, we are re-energizing rural. The weekend sports schedule and hits and helmets are next. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Kelloland Sports Zone. Looking ahead to another busy weekend on the local sports scene, and it starts at Minnehaha Country Club with the Sanford International. Round two getting underway tomorrow morning at 10:45. 54-hole tournament concludes on Sunday. College football, a big one. The key to the city up for grabs as Augustana hosts rival USF. Kickoff set for one o'clock at Kirkaby Over Stadium. Northern State taking on St. Cloud State, also a one o'clock kickoff. And same goes for SMSU and Upper Iowa as they do battle in Marshall. Sports Calendar is brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Reach your more. It's time to honor tonight's top plays and playmakers with another edition of Hits and Helmets. Hits and Helmets brought to you by Avera Orthopedics. Make your move to the largest orthopedic physician team in the region, Avera Orthopedics. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. For $5,